Welcome, welcome everyone to another episode of Konya Motak Mario. Touch, touch. Again this week with episode 43. Uh, here to bring you the latest news of Hello Project and somewhat related to Hello Project news uh, going last week or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Last week's ish. Yeah. Last week ish. Yeah, kind of. Plus or minus a week. Um, let's introduce who we have in the studio this week. We have first off Turbos86 from everywhere. Hey! Yeah! Hey. 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 <laughs> so famous, no matter where he goes, everyone recognizes him. Yep. Next up, we have our very tropical Invis. Oh. Huh? Um, again, not the last person. This time we have Ouroboros. Good evening. Patch, patch, patch. Permanently last place person from Takamado and we have Sanrio. Also, don't miss it when we are slapping our bottoms. <laughs> Leave it to you to be the one to quote Machan. <laughs> on okay. Yeah, we're, we're not going to do that. Moving on! Yes, so as usual at the beginning of our episodes, let's start off with some headlight news. <laughs> wow, we've upgraded. Nobody told me we upgraded the studio. I'm sorry, can we afford this? Can someone check our manager? I think we're gonna get sued. I think so too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, about that. I, this might uh, be our uh, last episode now. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you recognize where that is from, high five to you. So high five. Okay. Anyways, yeah. so um, back to the headline news. Uh, <laughs> on Twitter earlier this morning in Japan, we found out that uh, Morning Sume, or rather Hello Project, has once again put up a large sum of money for the uh, Morning Sume's upcoming single "Luck to Take a Chance." And they have rented the giant um, billboard space in front of the Shibuya 109. Uh, <gasps> so if you happen to be in Japan, definitely go there, snap a ton of pictures, because it's hopefully going to get the attention of that area. Because it's huge! And uh, people are really curious about it since this is the second time now since uh, 123 that they've done that giant billboard um, advertisement. And so they were looking up um, kind of the specs of what it costs to to um, do this PR stunt, and um, they found out um, that you can rent that space, which is approximately 12 meters by 9 meters, for 14 days for a price of 13 million yen, not including <laughs> tax. That's a lot of money? That is a lot of money. That comes out oh, that is... to about 160,000 USD. That is cheap. We can afford that, no problem. Yeah, gonna... so stay tuned next two weeks for our Takamaru poster and the Shibuya 109. Two weeks? We're gonna buy the whole year worth of it, man. It's just gonna say <laughs> Takamario.net. Email Samrio Takamario.net. Whole year round. Whole year round. Yeah. It, does go, it does go to show that they're actually spending money on advertisement. Yeah. I mean, 160,000 US dollars is... It's quite uh, some, yes, yes. Yeah. And it's very central to, to that area, too. But I wonder if it's the correct target audience for it, because the people in that area generally aren't, well, like, it doesn't seem like they're open to idols that much. If you're but there, all the well, all the big idol groups usually advertise in that area anyways. It's like the central place. Mm. Seen Johnny's billboards up there, AKB. But they're, they're up there. So. Yeah, yeah well, but it's you about time we must make were everywhere. <laughs> You yes. say that they're not open to idols, but they're probably well, they have probably seen that area being advertised with AKB and Supergirls or whatever, and they probably got the feeling that people are open to those ones, so they're trying to step into the mainstream, or well, at least put their names out there, right? Yeah, yeah. It definitely, it definitely gets attention from everyone who's walking by. So hopefully, it'll we'll be able to see that uh, effect on the sales and generic um, popularity boost from concerts and events uh, in the near future. Hopefully. So keep an eye out. Second bit of news, probably the most important news that came out this week. Oh, this year. This year, actually. Or the year. Then we found out on Monday that uh, it was leaked from Kumura Mizuki's blog 
that her crab number 19 has molted its shell. It's bigger now. Shell, yeah. So, uh, there are actually scandalous pictures also of that said number 19 crab on her blog. <laughs> you check it out. No. Leak, Photos of naked crabs. Yes, expect it on Friday sometime soon. <laughs> but it was released on Monday. I'm confused. Yeah, next week's Friday. <laughs> Old news by then. <laughs> yep. But naked crab. Number 19. Yeah, number 19. Crazy. No, no joke. Well, why does she number her crabs? <laughs> she has a lot of crabs. <laughs> just, just like does why Japanese, Sorry. just like why Japanese people number their typhoons. You know, typhoon number 17 just passed. So crab number 19. Yeah. Instead of naming them like, like in the states. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I like that. I guess. Number easier to count than Crab names. Job. Yeah. Here, <laughs> Crab John. <laughs> Crab John just scandalous pictures of Crab John. All right. Okay. Okay. So enough crap talk. Um, that ends our headlines. Let's move on to the main discussion topics for this episode. Oh. Um. First up, as you guys may be aware of, uh, this past weekend uh, we had Kiko Ayu visit um, Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States for a what? Yes, Kiko! Surprising, uh, anime Weekend Atlanta, I think the event was called. Uh, we're calling it Kika Fest 3.5 because that's essentially what it is. Uh, in between Kika Fest 3 and Kika Fest 4, which is going on this past weekend right now, actually. Right. And we're not there. Why? It's too expensive. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's in Osaka, so I'll pass. <laughs> and it's Kika. Good answer, good answer. So, um, a few of us were able to attend the event uh, in uh, Anime Week in Atlanta, and so why don't uh, Turbos give, why don't you give us a breakdown of uh, what happened? Okay, basically, uh, Atlanta Weekend, uh, um, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> anime Week in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's um a typical anime convention in the U U.S. where it's a free week, um, free day weekend um, convention of mostly anime stuff. Uh, Kika was invited as a musical guest, so she uh, had a couple of panels, a mini live kind of concert, and some um appearance at her booth. Uh, to sell stuff and do some autograph signings. Several was... autograph signings. Yes, yes, several. Lots of signings. Yeah. So, How many? What? How was many? That? Four? I think Three four. Or four. Yeah, I guess four. Wow. Four, I think it was four. And what was the requirement? What was the requirement or and limitations on the things that you can get signed? No, you just had to show up. <laughs> Wow. Sadly, Do you even have that, to buy anything? Goodness. Uh, towards the, I believe, uh, the third and fourth sessions, they were asking people to buy stuff to get signed. Because they were having trouble. Yeah. So like, yeah, that was about it. So what they had done is the staff had brought over one um, large suitcase full of uh, goods. It was just an mm -hmm. entire suitcase dedicated to Kika goods, and I think by the end of the Saturday. So halfway through the con, there was still a large chunk of the goods still unsold. Um, and they probably didn't want to bring it back with them, so they started... I think they added a requirement, but it was a very... Oh, for, loose... for the third one, I think. Right. After the concert. After yeah. the concert. It was a very loose requirement of you have to buy something just to get an autograph. Yeah, so everybody went for the cheapest item. <laughs> yeah, which was the $2 <laughs> photo set for $2. Yep. So I, I believe those sold out. Those? No, the <laughs> photos? I don't think those photos show. Still, so, that's, yeah. That's very sad. And and only one, one, I, little bit yeah, only, only one thing I saw though. The pink t shirts. Right. Uh, one thing we should mention about the t shirts. So they oh, made yeah. the printed uh, limited edition um, AWA Kiko AU t shirts in black and pink for all the fans. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the t shirts only came in the female sizes. So, oh. And female cuttings. Uh, sorry, female cuttings. Why? <laughs> Sorry, Zeho's calling me. Oh. It's Zeho. It's funny. Yep. Zeho bought it. Yeah, so I mean, we still ended up buying the shirts, but <laughs> it's, it's tough to wear. No. 
Uh, have I you just... guys tried putting it on? I believe Turbos did. I had a black t-shirt uh, underneath, so it doesn't look like it's a girl shirt. Ah, maybe it's now that t-shirt. time for your boob job. <laughs> <laughs> the and then we're never going to mention <laughs> that again. <laughs> yeah. Well, get that surgery, and then take a photo, and we'll put it on the Shibuya thing with the ads. Are you paying for the uh, $16,000? Well, and it's cheap. It, it's it's not come out of your money, man. It's cheap. Wait, we but, just but upgraded the studio, asking. apparently. We don't have money. <laughs> oh, we'll have to check with our uh, accounting department. I'll ask our manager. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, then what are the items that you can get signed? Or is it anything Any- goes? Anything. Anything. It was very not, relaxed. Even non... Even non... Um... For good? We, we saw or one girl good. got her iPhone signed. Uh-huh. <laughs> For the most part, yeah. though, people were pretty good about it, and they stuck to uh, Kika goods. But right. I think a few small number ha- had random items signed. Can you sign my shoe? <laughs> what? We have a. We, <laughs> actually, we have a story about that. We'll tell. Oh, spoilers. Okay. Um, but first of all, let's let's get to our overall uh, impressions of the weekend. Um, uh, Turbos, do you want to start with anything? Mmm. I thought I could start off. Mm, you go ahead. Okay. Um, so the first off, uh, I think the thing that was on my mind and probably most relevant because of kind of what we do here at Talk Mario was, uh, what was the translation going to be like uh, for Kika coming over to a small con? Because, um, as you know, in the previous um, overseas events, they usually had one, for North America at least, a very noticeable regular translator uh, appear with them. For all their uh, previous hello events. <laughs> so yes. What? <laughs> what? That's how okay. subtle we are here. But anyways. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was curious if that was if she was going to appear with Kika again because she's not technically hello uh, project. Uh, but we found out, which is kind of weird actually. Um, at the opening ceremonies, they brought in this random guy. I believe he was a, just a generic translator hired by the convention for all of the guests, so he has no particular affiliation to Hello, yep. and I felt really bad watching him because he was so nervous when he stepped up on stage that, like, half the things that Kika said he left out, I'm not sure because he doesn't he... know what was being said, or he's just, like, sweating like crazy. And... I think it was a bit of both. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of funny to watch because it's, it's kind of like, uh, at least my very first time speaking Kind of get that crazy, <laughs> yeah, that crazy feeling. Yeah, Except that. he has to do it in front of a huge hall of people who are there not for him, but it's so his job. It's his job. Um, and then there was also another translator who did not actually help uh, Kika, but she was there um, during the concert for the guest preceding Kika's performance, and she was also kind of the exact same thing, where she was really. Actually, she didn't seem that nervous, but it seemed like she didn't really care that much about <laughs> being a translator. And um, she was definitely a lot more calm, but it was I got the impression that um, anything that she didn't know or she didn't feel like translating, she just completely left out. And which made it really bad for the Seiyu, who a lot of people had went in to see. Because during their MC parts, which she did quite a few of throughout her uh, performance, um, she tried to make a lot of jokes that uh, could have been that could have worked in English, but the translator either didn't get it or didn't bother. So instead Lame. of translating it as a joke, uh, she would translate it as a sentence or a statement, and then a li- yeah, she was very little, very little, right? And then the crowd was kind of like, okay, oh okay, and then so and then they say he was like, why is no one laughing? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. It's that. Oh well. I felt a little bad for her there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So they should hire you guys instead. Uh, I don't think yeah. we'd also. We'd probably. I, I would take should. advantage of the situation. I think you just <laughs> laugh yourself. Yeah. And then just not translate anything. You just say, "Oh, that was really funny." Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah exactly. I thought it was a joke was here. Amazing. You guys won't get it. It's a funny joke. Yeah. So yeah, laugh. she said a joke. Please laugh. It's three, two, one. Right. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Yes. Right. We would probably also well, not good choices, but it it does um, 
it did remind me of like how starting out as translators felt like again since it's it's been a while since we've been doing this whole thing and uh, it's, it's always interesting to see people f I assume they're doing it for the first time because if they're veterans in the field and they that then that's really bad <gasps> so I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and say that that was their very first gig okay <laughs> that's nice of well, you if not their very first gig then possibly probably their very first in such a large number I mean that these people who do it in small circles or will do it you know just for statements and things like that that's and possible yeah it's not used to the crowd Right. Public I'll speaking. Well. Yeah. If it's not their first, it's probably their last. Oh, no. <laughs> that's I would true not be too. Surprised, uh, yeah. Ouch. I would not be surprised. It's true too. Uh, next thing uh, that left a, quite a big impression on me was um, some of the, the Western fans uh, and their attitude yeah. towards this whole event. So for the most part, actually, I was really impressed by how they, um, the amount of support that they gave Kika, and I think um, the Japanese fans were also very impressed. It, it was. Um, it's really nice to see. I think a lot of them, or the three Japanese fans that came over, <laughs> yeah, the three, yeah, were were really touched by what the amount of support that um, Kika got, or that they, yeah, that Kika got from the the Western West turnout. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, there's not. There's always like that one guy that you just want to like. A chicken face. Yeah. The and poop. This yes. particular guy um, was. I'm not sure what his reasoning behind his actions were, but what he did was he essentially went up to Kika. Uh, I'm not sure if it was the entire weekend, but at least the first. Uh, time. most of it. Most I think. of the weekend, yeah. Every, any time he got a chance to see her close up, so mm -hmm. like a, a signing session or something, um, he would be in someone else's gear. Uh, mostly, mostly one person's. What? Yes, one person specifically. Uh, someone else's like. So by that we mean someone else's T-shirt or wristband, or... some other uh, some other idol, right? Some other idol's merchandise, and he would uh, go up to Kika and also actively bring up that topic of how he was that other idol's fan. That's why I'm wearing not your stuff, but right. someone else's stuff. Right. And I believe th the point of it was to make a lasting impression or something. Yeah, yeah, I believe it was. And that's just something that I really. Don't get why you don't, do that. Uh, yeah, totally do not understand. Why would yeah, you? Yeah, I think we're all at a loss there because why would you want to make a lasting bad impression? I, <laughs> well, to... I, I, I'm not sure if he's trying to make an impression. He's just trying to show off that, see, I'm a huge Hello Project fan. And That's I'm here for very... your show too, so you should be thankful for me being whoa, here, even though I'm not whoa. your fan. I well, would that, not be surprised if that is his mindset. His or her. That, that's a pretty would, arrogant for, mindset for just a yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I want to give I, him the benefit of But I would not be surprised. That's really? That's... That's really sketchy. That, yeah. But that sounds bad, that, even for that, somebody yeah, who's well not known. used to Japanese culture. Like... That, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I'm making a huge assumption, but apparently this guy's is somewhat well-known for doing this kind of thing. So, yes, yeah. I believe he's done similar things in the past, um, not as maybe in a physical sense, but he has, like, he has brought it up to other idols who has done overseas appearances, and he's, uh, they're like physically spoken to them. Mm. Done, uh, something regarding direct interaction. Mm -hmm. So it's it is definitely not a one-time thing. It, uh, that's is that correct? Uh yes. Right. So that's and that kind of led me to think about what's what is in the the Western mindset where it seems like the fans uh, overseas always have this this mentality where they have to compete with each other to be the better fan and you see that oh, a lot right. on like online forums as well right it's always yeah. like oh I'm the number one fan or like I'm I'm a better fan than you because blah 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 blah. Right. Look at all my goods because I'm right. the best fan there it's is not, ever. I mean, it's not necessarily goods, but it could be like whatever. They all have their own personal reasons. reasons. Yeah. Their own so, grading scale, yeah. Right, yeah. right. But then whenever you talk to the Japanese fans, it's always like, oh, we're all. Oh, it's, you're a Kika fan too? That's awesome. Why don't you join up, join in with us, you know? Let's, let's all hang out together or something. Yeah. yeah. So there's something about the Western mentality that puts even being a fan into a competition mindset that I 
don't quite get. Uh, what do you guys think? I blame reality I think, uh, TV. I don't. <laughs> mm, no, no, probably has to play heavily into how um, in the Western culture it has you have to be very um, strong on your individualism. Yeah. That you have to stand out, no matter. It's just um different from this whole how this whole idol thing works. How that as a fan you support and you give it all you all for the idol. Right. But instead, with the Western culture, it's all about you. It's all you. It's all. And, and when you oh, say you, you're not yeah. saying you're not saying Kikawa. You. No, saying, no, no. <laughs> yourself. You have said yourself. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I get the impression sometimes it feels like a lot of them are being fans more for themselves rather than to actually support the girls. Mm. Yeah, I, I think Turbo's got it right on uh, with the differences between the individualism and the group mentality that Japanese tend to have. Another part of it is that in in Japan, even though it's like a, a hobby that people don't necessarily approve, it's still a big hobby in a, in a way. But in the Western sense, I feel like the people who are attached to this hobby, like as um, uh, of shoot, idols, like the yeah. people who are attached to idols, they they probably have the feeling where um, I decided to follow these. No one around me would, would understand it at all. So it's just me. This is this is my hobby. It's about me. Like the sense of individualism is much higher because this hobby is something that you don't, you you, you can't really talk about in the Western sense, because okay. there's no one around you that that share the same thing. Right. Mm. I do see that kind of mentality also from a lot of the posts where people are always saying something like, "Oh, none of my friends understand whatever they're talking about." Oh, they want to talk about is Gundam style. Right. Right. <laughs> they always try to, They always say something like, "Oh, my parents don't get my." or whatever yeah or like if for some reason their hobby has to be special or something which is a bit ironic because everybody has that issue where like somebody won't get their music so it's kind of pretentious to be like oh just because my hobby is Japanese it means blah, blah, blah. it's just a little bit much uh, yeah so I I really don't know I, I'm hoping eventually this will stop happening at overseas events but right of doubtful at this well point. it's just a couple of individuals yeah it's not i mean yeah i don't want to give the impression that it's like a large portion it's a very small group of people it's just sad that it happens yep. so for those guys if you're listening right now go burn yourself <laughs> <laughs> because those kinds of people would listen to us it's a very mild way Maybe. to say it you know Safe. So let's let's move on. Uh, right. Um, <laughs> right. Last thing for, that made a particular impression for me, and also with the uh, the Japanese otas that came over, was that um, so Kika is really famous for doing this Ashigunya move, which uh, you may have seen. It's where she gets on the ground and then pulls her leg, oh, she twists her uh, leg over forward, two hundred seventy over. degrees forward, yeah. over yeah. in an unnatural way because of her yeah. flexibility. Um, yep. That's one of her signature things that she does. She's done it on TV several times, as well as yep. live events. Mm -hmm. And we didn't think that she was going to do it at the uh, American event because whenever she does it, she usually is wearing a skirt or whatever outfit, and then it usually ends up showing her her underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Which the fans like, but that's but they're, they're always thinking like, that's not the kind of first impression you want to make for going to America. Right. But she actually ended up did doing it at the event, but fortunately she was wearing jeans, so all safe. Jeans that were too tight. So too tight. Yeah. Wow, that's even harder to do. It is very hard. There, are, I think there are yeah. several videos of it. Which instead of doing it, um, she usually does it with her left foot, left leg. But she, it was so uncomfortable for her, she had to switch the other leg. That's <laughs> <laughs> very awkward. Wow. Yes, yeah. But that probably made an impression. It did. Um, yeah, a strong impression. I mean, for regardless. for the Western fans, I believe it was most it, for most of them. It was their first time seeing it live in person. Yeah, that definitely is something that would make an impression to see something like that. And where does she do it during the Q and A or the concert CM or 
Where is it? Q&A. 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 Yeah, at oh. the very last Q&A. Um... So right before she left, she's like, Hey, I'm gonna show you guys this thing. Uh, this is cool. Watch it. <laughs> That's probably why they let her do it, too, because it was the last one. Like, oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. We're yeah. done. Better than the first. <laughs> better, better than starting the whole thing. Oh, and that's wow, scary. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm here for a freak show. Uh, I, sorry, I said that was my last one, but the um, the one last thing though, um, if you guys are Kika fans, you'll know that uh, two or three days before Kika was had come over or was planned scheduled to come over to the U.S., she did a Nico Nama special, and right. in her introduction of that, her she was practicing um, English introductions. Uh, that she was going to use when she went to Atlanta, and one of them was, uh, uh, "My name is Yukikawa. I am crazy." Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. And then her manager gave her the NG on that, and all the. No, no. What? Was oh, it the manager? One. Something. Someone on the side. So yeah. Someone on the side gave her an NG on that, and everyone was wondering if she was actually going to go through with that or not. And when she didn't, like, I believe, I think all the Kika fans online were so relieved. The the Japanese ones were like, "Oh, good thing she didn't say that." Yes. Because it's definitely it's not. What she thinks, because the um, with all the different English slang that they've incorporated into their dictionary, like um, they have wild, which I guess is similar to crazy for us in, in English, but wild has a positive connotation to it, whereas crazy has a negative connotation to it. And, but Kika doesn't quite grasp that yet, so she's working on it. Well, no, I don't it's think, it's I think contextual. I think it's more just that they didn't set up the context right because it's the difference between being like I'm a wild and crazy guy and I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think they they got the difference there yet. So someone make a soundboard with that, please. <laughs> I'm crazy. Oh, she's gonna have to work on her French and uh, whatever the other language now. Right. That's that's gonna be probably even Belgian, worse. Belgian, I expect. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, Flemish. Okay. Is the, the proper name for it, I think. Although okay. they speak French in Belgium as well, so. Okay, then French is fine. French works. And English. Bonjour, Yukiko! So, Turbos, any, any of uh, last thoughts, or shall we move on to the OTAR questions? Uh, we're good. Okay. Uh, so. Oh, um, uh, we have a uh, listener. Question actually. Oh, why don't you? Uh, um, let's see. Um, listener has uh, said that he saw a couple of the, um, those defaced pictures and posters of um, that Kika usually does for her um, Kika Fest concerts. And there was some from um, Atlanta as well. So I think the question is. Um, What's it all about? So uh, those are um, those are picture uh, those are pictures and posters that Kika has been doing since the start of this year. That uh, I think she's just either bored or whatever. She she draws all over her own face and thinks it's funny. That's just Kika being Kika. Yeah, and um, a lot of those posters were uh, given out to fans uh, in Japan. So the yeah um so people can get them and put it at home. <laughs> it's like oh, it's Kika drew all over this one. She made herself look like a guy, or she drew a beer on her face. That was one. Forces Anna. you to buy two of the picture because even if you get it signed. Yeah. <laughs> so in a, yeah in Atlanta, uh, um, a few fans uh asked her to um when during the autograph session asked Kika. To draw on their um, pictures instead of give her um, give them autographs. So it was basically you can do whatever during the autograph session. So that's what it's about. Yeah, unlike previous Hello acts that have come over, it, they were really relaxed on the rules uh, for the autograph for any actually any interaction with Kika. Yes. Probably because of such the low fan turnout for her, so they didn't really have much to work with. They rather have. The same people going around asking her to do uh, various things, than to have her sit there with nobody coming around. I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Because of that, well, it actually, the weekend felt like a fan club tour to me, fan club event rather than uh, some kind of overseas. Uh, they had so much time today; it's pretty crazy. 
good. Yeah. It did seem like it was just a different procedure from what I've seen, so... Well, she is technically not Hello Project, so... Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Next time this happens, I wouldn't expect it to be... I mean, with a different person, I don't expect it to be this good. Oh, another question um, from the same listener. Um, were there any babies or kids at this event? Similar to the other uh, US appearances by other Hello Project X. So there were... Um, there was one fan who came with her baby child. Uh, Most and, uh, babies are children, yes. Yes. <laughs> and um, she got some attention from Kika to do that. And there was another, um, just a random con goer who just happened to walk by the booth and Kika dropped everything and ran up to the to them and said, Oh, you have a very cute kid, let me take a picture of him. Ah, uh, the Sayu effect. Yes. You see a cute baby, you kind of just drop everything and go, BABY! <laughs> yes. Basically, oh. it's, uh, this is telling you people who has access to uh, little babies under the age of two to bring them <laughs> Yeah, take them with cons. you everywhere. Use them yes. to your advantage. Yes. Uh, I mean, that's the key. Or get a baby just for this. Oh my god. I wouldn't... Disclaimer. Dis generic yeah, we do not disclaimer. recommend uh, getting yeah. a baby just for this life. Yeah. yeah. You can rent a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I just did. <laughs> or one. Steal one. Right. Alright. Okay, let's move on to um, Ota impressions. Ota impressions. Yes. Yeah. Ota impressions. So, um, in in this corner, we're actually going to share a, a couple of the funny stories that we heard over the weekend um, after hanging out with the Otas and um, what they which there was a, did. which there was a lot of Japanese Otas there, right? All three of them. Yep. Wow. <laughs> so, Record high. The crowd. Three. The first one. Um, one, two, three. Comes from Koshi-san, who uh, is an older Ota. I believe he was uh, in his fifties, um, yep. and he came over to this event. Uh, he's a pretty regular fan. Um, Kika knows him by, by name. By, by name. name. Yeah. So yeah. it's he's a serious fan. And one of the, the funny things he first told us when uh, came over uh, was that um, he actually. Okay, so first of all, he his a little background on him. He's married uh, with kids. Uh, but his kids aren't interested in idols. But his wife seems to tolerate him being a Kika fan, so that's that's a big plus, first of all. But for this particular event, um, he actually lied to his wife about going to this and said he was on a business trip uh, rather than actually going to a Kika event. Sneaky! It's very sneaky. You better hope his wife doesn't listen to this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say. I'm sorry, Koshi's out. If your wife is listening, I'm very sorry. It wasn't me! It, yeah. Oh. Uh, it was <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what? <laughs> but yeah, it was it was pretty funny when when um, he told us the story because uh, they had he had plans to buy a ton of goods for all the uh, other Kika fans who couldn't make this trip. So yep. he's going back to Japan with like ten, fifteen T-shirts and <laughs> thirty uh, Kika Two L shots yep. from Atlanta, and he has to somehow hide them until until after Kika until, Fest is, uh, Kika yeah. Fest 4 is over so he can lie to his wife that these are actually the new goods from this event right. not from Atlanta I didn't right. go to Atlanta for that no 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 <laughs> right <laughs> yep um, the other story from from Koshi uh, san was that uh, so um, being a Japanese fan they were looking really forward to the uh, autograph event because that's something so rare over in Japan at least for HP idols right um, and so they all, of course, took advantage of trying to get as many autographs as they possibly could. And mm -hmm. uh, eventually, Koshi-san kind of ran out of things, or ran out of like, creative ideas of things to get signed. And right. so for one of his loops around Kika, he asked Kika to sign um, one of the Kika, uh, a Kika t-shirt from, I believe it was Kika Fest 3 or 2. The yellow one? The yellow one. That's 3, I think. Three, from Kika Fest 3. While he was wearing the T-shirt, yes, oh, please sign on I, my chest. Yeah, so it was like, please sign on my chest. It was, it was the most awesome thing I've ever seen. Wait, and, and and she did, yeah, of course. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did it. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, dude, I would have, I would totally do that if I know, I know that was allowed. I well, it wasn't, the thing was, it wasn't like he he got to sit right next to her. Like she, they pulled on his shirt a little bit and signed the, the corner. She, she leaned forward. He leaned forward. 
they yeah. pulled out his shirt a little bit, thing. you know. Please, please yeah, sign Nick, my pants. <laughs> Nick, please sign my pants. <laughs> I thought he was going to do that next, but... Uh, please sign on my strange. forehead. <laughs> <laughs> You know. oh, that's so American, though. American celebrity. Sign my forehead. Yeah. Sign something I'm going to wash off and won't have your signature anymore. Like, <laughs> In two hours. <laughs> that right. That was pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. Another cool story we have to share is uh, so during the first um, Q&A um, that Kika had on day one, I believe, yeah. um, there was one question where uh, she kind of reversed the things on the fans and she actually asked all of the fans who were present in the room, what is your favorite Kika song? And a lot of them actually responded with um, a bunch of album songs or her like pre-debut songs, the indie ones that she de uh, showed off at the Hello Winter Summer Con, uh, one of the Hello Cons, like right. Sayonara Nanda and mm -hmm. Hanabi, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Candy Pop, all the best, right? Um, so they they named those songs and. Um, one of the Yotas, Emusan, was really impressed because he thought that if anyone knew Kika from uh, the States, they would only know like the major debut songs. And and actually, he thought everyone would only know Kika K Y U, her first <laughs> song. One song. One song. Yeah. So he was <laughs> um, he was really impressed that all these album names started to come out, and all these fans like it was just one after another answering different album songs so he's like oh man they they know kika stuff so well wait that is so not logical though like if someone's going all the way to atlanta for an idol they would probably know more than one song of the idol if they're going to do that but uh, yeah, that's, that's cute i guess it's it was i don't know what um what was his uh, like thinking behind it but uh Turbus and i were talking about it and we just think that the yotas for in general, for towards overseas fans, just have really low expectations of what we actually know. Uh, yeah, it's I'm probably not, true I... that they have very low expectations, but yeah. at the same time, like, I mean, it's not hard to say, oh yeah, I know her album songs when you're not paying anything for it. That's true That's as well. True. So, you know, you have to add in, like, how many of those people actually bought her things? Mm. Which I would hope would be all of them, but I'm willing to admit that that's probably not true either. Mm. Fortunately not. So, and uh, on to the next impression. Um, Turbos, do you want to take this one? It's actually not auto related, but it's kind of. Ooh, the Facebook one? Yes. Alright, um, so there is a rumor going around um, am among the fans who went to the. Um, to the events at Atlanta, that um, there might be more Hello Project um, groups coming over in the next year, I guess, um, that might possibly be cute or berries again. Uh, berries again? What? That's like I, a third I, time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, Give me kind of there is no hard um, confirmation. <laughs> yeah, just bring the ick group over, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so um, it's not it's not written in stone or anything, but there's rumors going around that there might be more um, or they might be coming around again, but it's not certain where. It could be not even in America. It could be Europe. So. But it's, it's a fair speculation, but it's also um, very out there how even though they are some people related um, there or staff or people inside, uh, they could very well say anything and not be liable if it doesn't happen. <laughs> so, yeah, why don't, uh, why don't you give a little background information on actually ask what? Um, it was the people at the booth, the Kika booth at Atlanta, right. working there. Um, in the booth were um, people from Universal up front, and uh, the overseas company that was handling um, the right. event, which was uh, J House Rock. So I'm not sure which one of the people were asked, but. Any of them were not in, are not in the position to um, make a decision to bring in, or to decide if another Hello Project group can come or will come 
in the future. So um, I think these rumors should be taken with a um, huge bucket of salt. A <laughs> <laughs> bit on your face. Or just jump into the water. Mm. Yeah, that's... So, it, um, I'm not ruling out that there's a um, possibility that uh, HP groups will not come or will come. It's just, um, uh, don't expect too much or don't expect them to come after hearing these kind of things. Yeah, I would say oh. it sounds, uh, or rather, the, the spreading of this news sounds very promising, but based on who is actually there uh, for to answer these questions, they're not very high on the chain of command for, for a project, so... It very much is probably just a general temperature check. I mean, if you get any answer, then that's probably good enough for them in that sense, where it's like, okay, they want people, we can keep well, doing this. Well, of course they're gonna say, oh, anything is possible, I'm not gonna outright say no. Yeah, right. Right. exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, right. with that whole international thing, People will hope, so it's a good right. thing. Yeah, for okay. now. I keep on spamming. Right. But pick, pick cute or something because no offense to berries, but we've yeah, had don't, them don't up. Pick berries, you've berries yeah, 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 you've had your chance. Smiley. <laughs> Share the well. Smiley. Smiley's to America and cute to England. No, let's, maybe, let's maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Mono World Tour. <laughs> <laughs> Mono World, <too>. Mono World. <laughs> Mono that would have World to happen really take... fast with February coming around, you know, just... She has all of December. <laughs> Every week a different place. <laughs> Mono World Handshake. <laughs> and, and, she's not even, uh, and she's not even at some venue, she's just shaking random people's hands on the street. <laughs> I Turn that handshake. into like a box set DVD for a fan club to order. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the thing is... Like, my actually going to these Flash things Mob would make handshake. more sense. Because she could actually just be like, I was in Kamen Rider, and then it would make more sense than, like, that I was haven't done nice. anything animation related. Japan no. culture music! Woo! You know? Close enough. Yeah. Alright. Um, let's move on to our yeah, final yeah. Uh, yeah. story to share with you guys from uh, this Atlanta event. Um, so, of the three. Uh, Otas that came over, two of them were planning to bring a ton of goods, uh, sorry, a ton of CDs over to hand out to all the Kika fans. Yep. Um, unfortunately, right before they left from Japan, they they figured that there probably wouldn't be that many people showing up anyways. Yep. Uh, because Kika probably does they They assumed that Kika wouldn't actually have that many fans, or that many hardcore fans over um, states. So yep. they kind of bailed out last minute on bringing a ton of goods for the overseas fans. Unfortunately for the the fans of uh, Adam. Um, but after seeing all the um, uh, the big reaction, uh, or rather the, the big support for Kika uh, over this yeah. past AWA weekend, they actually kind of regret now not bringing anything for to give to the fans. And so we're gonna drop some breaking news here for you guys. So anyone. Anyone who is who knows someone going to the Kika France. events over in Europe, uh, in France, um, or if you actually are listening to this and you are going to the Kika event in France, please spread this news. Um, or so, not. Or, or if not. you want to be greedy. <laughs> okay, you know what? Don't be greedy. Spread don't be news. greedy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Don't be so, greedy. Anyways, they they felt really bad about not bringing anything for the overseas fans, so they're stocking up on a lot of junk to bring over to. Uh, junk as in, go as in goods, not junk. Sorry, yeah, yeah, goods. <laughs> Kika merchandise to, to or bring. other, not just Kika, other XP yeah, merchandise. General, well. general goods, and they're uh, one of the guys. Amazon has started a collection process on Twitter, and he's asking like a ton of different otas to if they're willing to donate stuff to his project. So I think he's going to bring a lot of stuff over. Um, some of the stuff actually might be kind of old. Uh, so he's been saying some of the old like. 2002, 2003, Hello Project stuff. So if you guys are into that, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> Actually, that's a pretty good way to disseminate some of the the older stuff. I mean, it is. Yeah. Everybody always wants the kind of the they new stuff. The if new only stuff AKB fans funny. do that too. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, you could wait. do with two two thousand copies of 
same single. They, they form a bed out of it. They don't have a bed anymore, they show their bed for it. <laughs> so they go sleep on the CD. Makes sense. Anyways. Anyway, so back to our point. If you guys know anyone in France, um, or going to the France event for Kika, uh, give them a heads up that there will be one, at least one Japanese guy who is going to be... He's going to try to look for Kika fans and give out um, HP goods. Uh, but as far as I know right now, there's only one guy going, so don't... don't Stamp, don't tramp, like rush him and like totally kill him. He's only one guy, so yeah. Also, yes. don't ask for everything. Yeah, uh, don't bad. don't take don't be greedy and take take. Be logical. There we go. Be logical. Just use common yes. sense. But Remember to but say spread the news. Oh yeah, also do things. Like, yeah, but uh, spread the news. Hopefully there will be a good turnout for Kika uh, Paris. Oh, and and then shake his hand, and ask for ask for his autograph on whatever he gives you. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Uh, yeah, <laughs> if you me. want to do that, that's fine too. Yep. All right. All right. Um. So that that wraps up our uh, topic for Kika. Um. Any any closing thoughts oh. before we move on? Uh, I want to ask a quick question. Sure. So um. So for the whole thing, there was uh, Q and A. There was concert. And the Q and A, so you guys got autograph sessions too. Um, but I know there were two shots going on, and that is pretty rare usually for idols to give two shots. Yep. Yeah. So, so what was the requirement for that, and how often did that happen, and what were the reactions to that, and what kind of poses did you guys do? <laughs> requirements? There were no requirements. You just had to line up. So that was with the autograph. You didn't even have to buy a thing. That's true. Yeah, they were taken at the same, or rather given out at the same time at the autograph, uh, as you were getting an autograph oh. for your turn. Um, there's really generally no requirements. They Pretty much if you asked, you got it, except if you were one of the Japanese fans, um, they asked you to wait after it was less crowded, because at the beginning of the what? sessions, there are usually a lot of people, a lot more people than the end, at least. Um, so they asked those guys to wait until the crowd thinned out a little bit before they would Hey, but if you're Caucasian and female, oh, anything goes. That's very true. You can go for hugs. Yeah, yeah. Some kisses. people got hugs. Kisses, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was gonna say if, um, like it sounds like you can loop and get multiple two shots. So, yes. That was absolutely done by a lot of people. Yes. I guess except for the Japanese people, if they uh, had to stand on the side. No, they, they got some as well. They looped for autographs. I they didn't take too many two shots, but they got a few. They uh, didn't get a two shot every time around. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. One funny story though that the uh, Western fans had, had did was uh, on the very first day they got a two shot, and for some reason they went to a nearby convenience store to print yeah. it out on a digital uh, <laughs> photo. Yeah. And uh -huh. then they got, uh, sorry, they got an autograph and then got a two shot with Hika of with her holding that autograph. Yeah. And then they. Oh what? Yeah. And so they yeah. they got that printed out, and then they went back. Mm, the they, had day, yeah, they had her sign that. Yeah. They had her sign that. And then print that out again, and then the final day they had her sign that again. That is Inception. Awesome. It very much. Is. Yeah, it was <laughs> autograph Inception. Inception. Your autograph Inception. <laughs> Key custception. That is very awesome. I like that idea. It's pretty funny, but it's I don't know. But it's a little weird. It's it weird, is. but I guess it works. If that's your thing, that's pretty cool. But, but Kika, of course, Kika, that, Kika. Yeah. But of course, that it's is unique. something that's you can only do in these things. You know. No way you would get that many chances in Japan. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and probably never will that happen again. Probably. I don't think not. we can expect yeah. this kind of behavior on a normal basis. That's definitely that's cool. a, a good opportunity that they took. That something really silly like that. I'm sure Kika enjoyed it as well, or at least thought it was really weird. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but she's, she's weird crazy. She is. <laughs> so what poses did you guys do? Uh, a lot of people did um, her. Uh, uh, you guys. Well, what? No, we just. No, like, moving uh, on. Standard. Yeah. Just standard. 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 Uh, standard. Boring. Yep. Right. <laughs> well, let's just, as a final note, though, let's just make this a thing where it's like, you don't know if it's going to happen again. So next time something like this comes up, if you have the chance to go, you got to go. That's Absolutely. Thing. And uh, feel, free, feel free to share a report on our forum or anywhere on our site because we do love to hear stories of. Uh, the fans interacting with the, the HP girls they've been following for so long. 
Right. All right. Stories, See you guys in 2013 Sakura Con Mia Murakami. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there in the, in the all there. pink gear. All pink. Yep. All right. Hell yes. All pink and dark. Yep. All, all Takamari members. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's our all, first all carry reunion. Yeah. <laughs> Cut in fest 1.0. <laughs> if it happens, we've got to get a big poster made. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get one. We'll get matching t-shirts and everything. We'll get her to sign it. Yeah. And then get it printed out. Yeah. Yep. And then get it signed. <laughs> Keep an eye out for that. Alright. We'll probably be on the cover of the Sucker of Time pamphlet thing. Right. Either that or get arrested. Yep. Too. Close enough. Um, let's move on to our next topic of today's episode. Uh, so as you guys uh, may be familiar with, uh, about a month ago, SSTV had a three-hour uh, special on Morning Musume uh, to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the group's uh, founding. And in it, there was actually a ton of interviews from former OG members as well as the existing members. Um, where they talked about all different things. Uh, one of the kind of recurring themes for all the different questions being asked was um, how how do we move from here from Morning Musume? How do we get get back to where they used to be um, at the top of Japan's idol list? Um, during the Ochi interview section, sorry actually there's a lot of uh, different points that will be coming over this topic and we'll just kind of bullet point them out and have our um, have our crew here just give you their thoughts on, on each individual topic point. Um, the first one is uh, during the OG interviews with the current members and the, uh, the older members, um, I believe it was Yasuda who said that uh, in the past it was, there was a really strict rule, and you guys may remember this rule, if, if a senpai had a cer certain hairstyle um, you and you went there the same event or same day for the event and you had the same hairstyle, you had to change it before the event started. You're, there was no uh, copying of hairstyles allowed within the group. And as a result of that, um, people within the same gen or kind of in the Kohai category would often uh, go to the event hall as early as possible so they can get their hair and makeup done first so they can kind of secure or reserve that hairstyle so that if they had something they really liked, the other girls would have to change because since there's no copying allowed. Calling it. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Call, exactly. Calling this on hair, basically. Right. That sounds silly. Um, but what that has led to is for now, if you look at current gen, um, morning Musume, there, that rule absolutely does not exist, and there's oftentimes a lot of girls share the same hairstyle. Uh, for example, we um, see often that uh, Sayu will joke that uh, Sayu and Riho have the same hairstyle, and actually Sayu will be flattered by it, as opposed to back in the past when she first joined, there was huge like, kind of taboo things of copying hairstyles. Um, but one of the OG concerns was for, I think, I think it was Yasuda who said this, that when she looked at the group for the first time, everyone actually looked the same to her. She couldn't distinguish the members. Uh, they didn't stand out, like uh, ninth gen, 10th gen, because everyone had similar hairstyles. Whereas <gasps> back in the day, everyone had their own hairstyle, and you'd be like, oh yeah, Suji's always the one with the pigtails, or oh yeah, uh, whoever's always the one with the ponytail, you know, or, whoever's mm -hmm. always the one with the hair down. So right. that, that's one of the concerns that the OGs bring up. What do you guys think about that? Is that just kind of a silly thing? Um, yeah, I think that's very silly. How, um... <laughs> that's, thing, that's a thing back then. It's been over 10 years now. And nowadays, all the um, big-name idol groups, they have so many members with so many ha same hairstyles. Nobody cares anyway. Say, hey, it's that <laughs> group. It's not about the individualism anymore. It's about the whole group itself. So I don't think this is something to be of a major concern of. And also I think how uh, back back in the day, how the girls had to fight for who who gets what first, it really shows how they were really not that tight. Right, to, it was uh, to, very much to, a yeah. professional business for them rather than... Then now, now it's all like, oh yeah, we're, we're, we're Def Gen, yay! Yeah, high five. Kind of thing, yeah. High ten. Like that. Kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, that was 
really old fashioned in the sense where you could do this kind of we need to make defined cookie cutter roles. I mean, it's kind of like when you go to a movie and it's like, oh, that guy is the hilarious guy. This is going to be the guy who dies the first time something bad happens. Like, <laughs> you don't, you, you try not to do the stereotypical assignment anymore because it makes you look too manufactured. So, you know, getting rid of that. You can only have kind of this one hairstyle assignment thing. Is kind of trying to look forward and be more more unique in a way, even though it's less unique from a different angle. Um, so then we have we've seen on a lot of shows recently where, like, morning somebody will go out in the streets and they'll or they'll surveys and they'll they'll ask like, so do you know any of the girls? And most of the time, the fans or the bystanders from these TV shows are unable to identify anyone except for like maybe Sayu Bang. This on mm-hmm. occasion. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think that's just due to overall low popularity, or do they need to do something to stand out? Definitely I'm, overall, yeah. Yeah, I, I would call that on the overall low popularity. Even if they have individual hairstyles, uh, even if they do like, they, they walk out in colorful jumpsuits or whatever, no one's going to recognize their name or even the faces. They would just recognize them as, oh, those were the girls I think they were in Molly Musume. Like, that would be the best reaction. At most, they would be recognized as Morning Musume instead of, oh, that's, a, that's an idol girl, or that's a girl, you know. So, yeah, it, there are just so many idols out there right now. There's, like, to expect people on the street to recognize, like, the 9th gen members, 10th gen members, that's, that is uh, unrealistic, if you ask me. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts from you guys? Mm-hmm. No, no. <laughs> we're we're kind of sort of in in the same vein, I think. It seems that. like it seems like you guys all agree on the same thing. Um, yeah. High five. No. But uh, moving on on the uh, similar topic that Turbos brought up of how different it used to be back then. Mm-hmm. Saw you and Reina actually bring up this point when I moved on to a current gen only discussion portion of the SSTV special, where one of their concerns is that when they're on stage. Um, or actually even off stage on the, the behind the scenes material you see on DVDs and whatnot. It's it's a very friendly atmosphere. Even though um, Sayu and Gaki both don't really like the at home Misume thing that Aichan created, mm-hmm. it's still very much there, uh, even as of right now. And so one of Sayu's concerns was that um, it doesn't feel as professional as as it used to when Sayu and Reina first joined because um, when they first joined, there was very little interaction with the senpais, and it was always like, you have to be on your game, you have to be professional about it, you have to do your greeting. There were so many rules in place of things you had to do. As a result of that, though, it pushed everyone to always be competing for, to always fight to win more fans. And right. um, so Reyna thinks that back then, when they had this level of professionalism, um, when the fans would look at the girls on stage, you could tell who were rivals just based on how they uh, their mannerisms toward each other on stage and both Sai and Reina feel that that's something that's pretty important at least for in terms of like self-improvement for the group and that's something that doesn't exist now since everything's so friendly. What do you guys think about that? Well they say that but they still play into the whole friendly thing themselves, the two yeah. of them. So it's it's really the, how the two of them really just saying um, how things should be professional, but they don't. They're not um, saying how it's completely fail now. I think. Right. But I'm just, just, I'm just saying the difference is pretty much rather than saying it should be this way or that way. I, I just think they're showing a professional face, but they actually secretly enjoy the relaxed at- atmosphere. Myself, I'm especially sure. Sayu, because she seems to get you know she likes the the younger girls in the group. She's all fan girls over them nearly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think she does do. She does enjoy the new relaxed atmosphere where she actually gets to know the kohais, whereas before you probably. Didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but she as it was as it was getting closer to Gaki's graduation, um, whenever she had um, an Usachan piece radio uh, episode. Every now and then she would mention how she would always be talking about Gaki of they, how they kind of want to move away from the at-home Sume thing. Um, because it, it kind of 
on the one hand, it's great for building uh, intergroup relationships, so all the girls are really close, unlike, say, AKB, where most of the top end girls don't know the bottom end girls. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, uh, when everyone's so friendly, they don't really. Um, there's no sense of. There's no uh, motivation to compete with each other, to try to like outdo each other. So it seems. There like is now. Is there? There, there is now. Oh, you have a chance. I'm sure they're all threatened. Uh huh. So, uh -huh. I don't know. Um, but so, do you <laughs> think that it affects their? It, it, I mean, are they relaxed too much from this, or should they be? Are, are they too comfortable on stage with each other? It, it's <clears throat> it's a matter of of kind of what you want to get out of it. I mean, we we're constantly doing this argument where it's like, well, are we losing out because they're not professional enough versus are they getting a lot of value from the fact that they they are more casual with each other? And that really depends on what the, their audience kind of runs towards. I mean, there's just as many people, I don't know about in total in Japan or anything, but there are a lot of people who like the fact that they don't have to worry about competitive states and things like that, as there are people who want to see that kind of conflict just to get more fire out of everybody. Well, let's, I mean, let's put it hypothetically oh. in a situation of... Sorry, Senryu, did you want to say something? Uh, right, um, I think, for, well, for, uh, I prefer seeing them uh, being quote-unquote more tight with each other than being the quote-unquote professional. Uh -huh. um, mainly for the reason that right now they're not dominating the idol industry. Uh, so for the, own, for, the, for the sake of the girls, having them being so tight in the group, being so friendly with each other, I think is much better mental support for themselves than being, oh, I gotta be here on time, I can't have you know, uh, conflicting hairstyles. I think for the for the sake of the girls, they would enjoy the time much more, much more, being in Morning Musume if they are, you know, being less professional, more friendly, so they can enjoy the time more. And it shows too, you know, it shows on on DVDs and things that they're enjoying the time, and we like seeing them enjoying the time while they're working. So I like that more than the professional. Okay. Thanks. Um, hypothetical question to all of you guys. Mm -hmm. um, if they had a chance to make a break to get back to the top, say, to beat AKB again, but it required them to turn on that professional atmosphere once again, since <sighs> the strict training and things, <laughs> would you take that, or would you prefer to keep them at a mediocre level, but everyone much more friendly? Uh, wow. Well, back back when um, Morning Moose was, was at the top of everything, uh, if you if you watch those um t uh say Hello Proning or those DVD magazines those kind of footage, you still see them acting friendly toward each other, but everything seems so manufactured. Right, right. Now it's all uh, I wouldn't say it's completely genuine. Some of some of stuff still made up, but um, it's more natural. Um, I guess it really depends on um. Well, no, I mean, when you would you trade that for? For idol dominance in the market again, the, friend, the genuine friendliness. Mm. Well, that's well, to, to really, I, I'll say, yeah, I'll say that that's one of their current selling point, though. Okay. All right. So. For for me, to to be selfish, I would prefer um, the current state more than the idol domination. But everyone's not friendly; they're not, they're more, you know, mechanical. Uh -huh. Yeah, I prefer this more. Okay. Um, Invis, what about you? Uh, uh, I would I would side with them staying the way that they are just because once you do something like that, like if you were to ship them and they would be more professional, it would get them back on top. It would only be so long before that wears thin. You know, another group will pop up, another way to get more people, another voting situation that somebody's going to use to urge their advantage in other groups that get sales up and popularity up. And, you know, it, it just seems to me that playing kind of this slow friendlier thing kind of works better for something that, you know, it's the, the marathon versus the sprint concept. Very good analogy. Woo! Um, and Arbars. I'm going to be really awkward. I'd like them to be able to get to the top by showing that working as a friendly team is the best way forwards. To, if That's you can unite the group... Cheating 
answer. Yeah, you can't have a <laughs> This is the way that it Derp. should work. It should work. They're, they're all, you know, they're, they're all friendly. They're very friendly. They should be able to strengthen each other's abilities by helping each other. I mean, this is the way the world's meant to work. You're meant to make the world a better place by working together. Well, okay, so what we need we is a reality are. TV show. <laughs> <laughs> it's idol oh, teams no. against each other. They have to work together as teams. Right? And they only have a thousand, uh, ten thousand yen per month that they can survive on. <laughs> no, but um, I'm, I'm not the only one looking. Actually, it, um, the chat of the people who are listening to me. Everyone seems to like the idea of it being friendly. Okay. Yeah. Now we've had like about you, four you different do. viewpoints Question. up to now, and they're all friendly sided rather than professional. I think the reason, yeah, I think the reason why everybody answered this way because how Morning Moves may, the members make up the group now is based on is this that's the ideology is how the girls all work together instead of competing against each other like back in the days how Morning Movement has evolved from being a group of losers who uh, failed the audition and got put into a group and still had to compete against each other to now that they're a group of um, similar aged girls yeah. well they're not they don't fail auditions anymore but yeah uh, <laughs> the yeah. thing is that they, as they're going now they're getting stronger and stronger whilst working together so it shows that it's working. Yeah, that is true. Because if we look at the lineup right now, you know, the, the sixth gen, uh, not counting Mikisama, you know, they're, they're, they're tight. Even back in the quote unquote competition days, they would compete as a team. Uh, and if we look at, you know, Liho Liho and Suki, you know, they came in as a very tight pair already, uh, the Pom Pom group as well. And seeing, you know, Haruka and Machan, you know, they, they, they build up together. Instead of being rivalry, I can't imagine seeing like Machan and Haluka being like rival. Yes, okay. you you wait for Haluka to take up the piano. <laughs> 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 well, we also have to admit that the audience that we're talking to is one probably built off of not the original generation, so they're going to start with what they know. So, yeah. right. Um, it'd be interesting to see actually any of the the long fans, the, the long-term fans who's been around since the OG days, if they actually prefer the old style than the new style. If any of you guys know or happen to be an OG fan yourself, uh, let us know, make that distinction so we can get a good survey of what everyone thinks. Let's, let's move on to a couple of more topics from the show and then we'll, we'll kind of end because we're kind of running. Um, what, building off of this uh, point that Sayun Reina made, the next point that Sayun made was that from what she sees in the current group um, is that there's no sense of Kohai and Senpai. Um, there is for 6th gen to everyone else, but within 9th and 10th gen, um, that that border does not seem to exist at all. And again, mm -hmm. this is kind of related to what we were just talking about, but mm -hmm. uh, Sayu says that partially it's... Um, uh, first of all, Sayu thinks that there should be a border. Um, but she doesn't actually blame the ninth and tenth gen for this because um, it's it's not their fault for first of all their their join dates are actually very close in time and also their age wise they're also very close and it's kind of not as easy to distinguish because you have Ikubo who actually is older than the ninth gen so that there's some awkwardness in that at the same time um, they're embraced by the staff always as a group so they the managers always refer to them as Kyuki Juki, anyways, together collectively, so the staff themselves don't create a border um, within the industry or within the, the company. But the thing that Sayu feels that should exist is that um, the ninth gen should kind of push them, push themselves up to a little bit of a higher level because they did join first. They had, they do have more experience than the tenth gen, and they should be like, they should be teaching the girls. They should be sending examples, they should be um, scolding or pointing out mistakes when need be. Mm. And based on what's going on right now, it seems like they're always together, 9th and 10th gen, and it's like they're always relying on each other, and again, it's a very teamwork-like thing, but when you don't have the Kohai-senpai thing for Sayu, uh, it's a, 
Sorry if he was like, it helps the 10th gen grow more than the 9th gen, and it's going to hold the 9th gen back because they're always with the 10th gen. What do you guys think about this this particular point? Sayu Sai always have really very tra uh, traditional thinking. Yeah. And, and um, I don't think knife gen should be blamed completely for it. As um, well, one point is that the tenth gen members are very strong willed, so they're not gonna stand back and let the knife gen just beat them right out because they are technically senpais and. How um the knife gen, um the knife gen they do do um work very hard, and um, but like all the points you brought up, their um age the age, and um the join days and all that they're just so similar, that it's very hard for them, uh, for the knife gen members to stand out or have any authority over the tenth gen members. So it's it's um. It's not that they don't want to. I guess they um, probably were told um, the knife gen members were told that they um, would have um, girls. Um, they have other members under them, but uh, I don't think uh, it actually can work out that way. Just okay. okay. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah. You got anything else? Okay. Go ahead. Well, Go ahead. I, I I totally agree with that. The the whole idea that that you know. They're, they're talking close age range there, and Sensei's kind of old-fashioned thinking. But the problem with it is that we're running through this kind of almost in weird pacing. I mean, a lot of people are used to that, I'm going to quote, unquote, platinum era time where nobody, anything, there were no changes within you know, the dimensions. And then now we're looking at this time where we're kind of at an accelerated recruitment graduation rate. So it's it's... Just as much as it's a difficult thing kind of making your, your marks in terms of standing out, being that kind of, I'm this person, I'm this person, you're also running into the issue where we're talking about, you know, how, how do we create the dynamic within that amount of time? When they announced 10th gen, then we had that issue where it was like, LinkedIn was just there, they, they did learn a lot, but they hardly, you know, had the confidence, I think, at that point to say, yeah, now I can be a, a, a senpai and do this, you know, so... When, when you say, you know, can we do this again? I don't think you can ask that of people who are, you know, just within a year of experience of each other. I mean, 10th Gen came out pretty much by that time. You figure within the company, they were saying, we need more people. And so before they were even acclimated, they were planning for the next thing already. I, I think from Sai's point of view, though, she had to do this herself. Uh, like when, or, or rather, she saw this going on when 5th Gen came in and then 6th Gen. Like immediately, the, the senpais, and then when Oha came in, the site in the area took over the senpais as well. She's probably wondering why they can't do the same. Even though, of course, the times have changed quite a bit for... Hey. Yep. Uh, it's, that's still just, the, the time difference is so much sh shorter in that sense. Shorter? Yeah. I think. I mean, for for the you know, between the generations, like when you talk fifth to sixth, there were still there was still a greater amount of time, I think, just kind of running the numbers in my head, than there were between you know, ninth and tenth. So asking for that same kind of effect, being able to step up, kind of you know, you're asking a lot of somebody who's just you know gotten used to what they're looking at. And any last points on this particular topic? Okay, uh, let's move on to one of our uh, our second to last uh, point from uh, this SSTV special. Um, so, in in one of the in the closing bit for this for the show, uh, they once again uh, interviewed all of the OGs and asked them what are their thoughts of where they see Morning Sume going on from here. And one of the criticisms um, they got from uh, Fujimoto Miki was that the characters that they uh, ninth and tenth are showing um, are pretty weak for her standards, and I know that, that she might be a little bit biased in her analysis because she also has a very strong character. But she wants to see, personally, she wants to see a very strong stage presence from all the girls to the point, even if, and I think she didn't say this specifically, but she wants to see something like Reina Gaki, where you can see like 
both girls sparks. Have, yeah, you can see sparks. Both girls have really strong <laughs> characters, and you can tell that sometimes they don't like each other on stage. But it's like it makes for good entertainment. It makes for something good to watch for all fans involved, it, regardless of whether you're a Reina fan or even a Sayu fan. I think we have enough of the uh, Miki and uh, Lika fights already. <laughs> yeah. I, I but yeah. she she kind of wants to bring that back. I, she I mean that's I mean that's just her opinion. But do you guys want to see that for ninth and tenth gen or is that too too much? Do that's you want to reality it? TV to me. I don't know. <laughs> do you want to see the whole trying to? Slap Mata across the face. Well, know. it doesn't have to be well, like maybe. <laughs> manufactured drama, but it could be like, like Biho Daishi just always fighting to outdance each other on stage or something. Uh, don't they already do that? <laughs> they they, they compete, really but show. it's it doesn't. I mean, it yeah. the intensity level is not there. I'm sure they're actually trying to outshine each other. Um, but and also, like when you look at Kudu, right? She's always saying. I've got to represent my my egg background. I'm always trying to be the best. Player. Like I don't really get that from seeing well, that's, that's, normal stuff on stage. That seems like something that you would need to have another venue to show. I mean, we we can be under the understanding that you know they're doing this and they're trying to be friendly with each other at the same time. But unless we get something essentially like a show, it's not about farming. No offense to farming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then there's no way to do it. I mean, if you had a show where it was, you know, you got to see them be more aggressive in co in competition, then you would probably get that sense. But they don't have a venue for that anymore. There's only so much you can do in a concert MC. Mm, okay. You know, because they're essentially okay. resting during MC so that they can do choreography again. So you can't do a major dance competition. Okay, like I hate to be in agreement with most Western fans, but <laughs> yeah, they, they the um what. What I'm getting from this whole thing is um, that Miki, Miki Sama is saying that they need a Utaban, <laughs> uh, like a uh, uh, like uh, show to uh, go on and show off their characters to the world. But uh, then the problem is nobody cares in the in the Japanese society. Um, uh, yeah, oh, the mainstream that nobody cares in Japan. That's like, oh, I, oh, I don't care what these people are fighting. Well, I don't care. Yeah, Let's yeah. switch channel, look at some, watch some AK Bingo. <sighs> like that. I, I yeah. have to say, yeah, Utaban was a great opportunity for them to, to show off all their different characters in really silly ways. So, if they could get something like that again, that, that would be pretty amazing. I mean, it's, that is not impossible to do, to get a show to for them to um, show off. But it's more like if there's an audience that will um, tune in to watch. Uh, I don't. I don't think they can get the numbers right now. Yeah, yeah. So, well, if they could get on Konya Mo I think. <laughs> <laughs> then we'd have to upgrade the studio again with cameras. We'd have to add more seats to our studio. So if, they, they, if they get enough my seat, I, I can just sit on the floor. Oh, okay. They can sit on me. No, that's not. No, right. no, that's NG. The managers would never. Ours would never accept that either. I'll sit no. on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. you can have my chance to share a chair. <laughs> no. <laughs> you guys can musical chair our way in, yeah, in uh, the corner we'll while we do the show. Uh, but right. um, yeah. on, on that topic though, um, I think... That I, I'm the type that I prefer seeing teamwork more than individual, even rivalry or whatever. So like if I watch sports, I would watch team sports, like soccer or whatever, more than like tennis. So instead of seeing rivalries, or seeing them battle it out, seeing who's the best. I prefer seeing them be maintaining the way they are. So yeah, it seems like everything but, goes back to that friendly atmosphere being being the most optimal for or most preferred for you guys. Yeah, well, especially with this current lineup too. Mm -hmm. well, I would like to see competition, but I need it to be on a show. I need enough time. There has to be a goal that they can fight for. It's just like, be the better person. It's like, well, what's better? Because if you look like a bitch on television, then that's not helping. Oh, the B word. I've, I've worked oh, it oh. out. Exactly what we need to do. We need yeah. to get all of 9th gen and 10th gen picking on Oda Sakura <laughs> until she leaves. <laughs> all showing strong characters to get her pushed out of the group. There's all the character you need. That could be next episode of Satoyama. <laughs> What, they, they bury you in the soil and see if <laughs> oh the fish might grow then, you might get two of it, that's no good. And then throw in one of the balance. If I hire a guy from Haramoni at and she, he can just be next to her going, eh. 
the catfish guy? Yeah, because he's <laughs> buried in the ground too. Where's right. He? Actually, I, I think Orbos, he brought up a very interesting thing. Uh, yeah, the, the UF of Jen, oh, that's a good yeah, She is coming in, but I don't think she is coming in with an image that she can rifle anyone. Like, in the sense, like, she, you know, she's the only one. So, there's no one in the same generation for her to rifle with. Well, it seems like, uh, from her introduction at the very at the public rehearsal, she already thinks she's better than everyone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She kind of rubbed so, me the wrong way, but that's just So, so she thinks it's not even right for you, it's just domination that she has. That's, well, that's what she thinks. Uh, I think because of how Sengu played her up, but... Yeah. That's why... Like, yeah, I don't yeah. really... Hey, maybe there's, there's a upfront secret plan to um, have 9th and 10th gen rail it up. Maybe. So, maybe. Yeah. Hey, it's going to be 9th and 10th gen versus 11th gen, that could be possible. <laughs> that, that's called bullying. Sounds fair to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, maybe they announce something else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, why don't we close out this this final discussion with one last point from uh, the current leader of Morning Sume Sayu as her closing oh. note. Um, she said that one of her goals is to bring back Morning Sume to the high point where where they used to be. Um, and to the point where they can impress the OG members enough where the OGs will say like, now this is the Morning Musume that we know. I think Sayu has really high expectations for this group, uh, which is really great. And I think we've talked in the past about her, her blind optimism towards what she expects to accomplish. Um, what, what do you guys think? Is she going to do any? What does she need to do to, to make this happen? It's not um. possible. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, and let's oh. end on that no. depressing note. It, oh, no, not in a depressive way. I just I don't think that you could ever say get to the point where you would say this is just like the old days because that's not where we are anymore. If they were like the old days, they still probably wouldn't have the same level of popularity as the old days. It's about evolution, you know? You have to find the new venue and the new way to do it. Okay. Uh, Sandra, were you going to say something? Um, I was going to say that, yeah, they probably will never be able to impress the OGs, but not because of um, that the group is not popular or whatever, but it's more because that the group is so different from what the OGs uh, were in for hmm. that I don't think they would ever prove it just because they're so different. So unless they go back into the quote unquote professional way and let the OG see that, you know, they're, they're not going to be happy with the, the friendlier thing that we see. So maybe yeah. Sayu is chasing something she'll never get. Um... No, well, no. Um, from the sense that, from the sense I got, she is also saying that. Um, I want to show them that this is the Morning Musume now. So I think what she's aiming for is to show them that the old, the traditional way is gone. You guys are old, so this <laughs> is what we are right now. They are. That's kind of mean. Hey, it's true. They are old. That's why they call OGs. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Barbaros is our OG member. Ah. Uh, no, he's OP. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> that. Is a good segue. That is that is a good segue about uh, our boss being OG into the next corner, which is the listen to mail corner. Listen uh, to mail. Yeah. So I'm gonna jump in right now. Yeah. So surprisingly, two weeks in a row we got was two weeks. No, we skipped a show last week, right? I don't two, know. Two episodes in a row. Two, two shows right, in a row. Two yeah. episodes. In, yeah, two shows in a row. We got listen to mail in. Which you can send to Sanrio at takamilia.net or whatever you want to talk about. Uh, this email is from Davey. Um, the subject is too late because I think he sent it yesterday. But uh, he sent it because he read something on Tumblr. Uh, he read someone's comment on the Tumblr and he just wants our quick opinion on what we think of the subject. Mm -hmm. uh, what he got from that person's comment was that uh, now that Liho Liho is being in the center of everything, literally <laughs> being in the center <laughs> of everything, he's. He thinks that is oh, he sees that is more bad than good, uh, and then the person somehow compared it to Yuka in Smallage, uh, but the difference was that Smallage was more equal in lines because they were like a four four members group for a while, mm -hmm. um, but Liho Liho is 
doing domination in Morning Mr. Mayor, mm-hmm. getting all the pushes and kind of putting the same girls, uh, the, the girls in the same generation, more in the back. Um, uh-huh. Do we think it's a good or bad thing? So uh, we'll, we'll just be quick on this because the show is kind of long. But let's start with uh, let's start with our boss. You always start just when there's a vehicle driving past this end of the of the place. Um, <laughs> it's it's a bad thing in my opinion. There should be a little bit a little bit more spread, but it's good to have somebody who's pretty and popular at the front. But they need more of a spread, yeah. All right, then how about uh, let's go with uh, Invis. Well, she's the current ace until somebody fixes it up. What else are you gonna do? You know, they just if they want to make the mark, it's that thing about being motivated. Let's see it happen. Then, in your opinion, do do you think it's bad or good that she's dominating? I'm, it's fine with me. I still look at the one that I want to look at when I want to look at it. You know, if you're not gonna <laughs> give me the person I want at center, then I'll look in left field. Right, sports. But I guess that, yeah, but, but I guess that works because you are, you know, the Sayu fan, and she is not all the way in the back. You know, if you're a Suki fan, tough luck, tough luck. All right, um, Turbos, what are your thoughts on the whole Liho domination? Want, it's my same as my thought as always. Whoever sells goes to the front. Fine with me. <laughs> all right. So, so you also don't think you're doing more bad than good then? All right. Uh, what? And, and, well, okay. you, you're saying it's fine, so you don't think it's doing bad that they're... Oh, all right, yeah, I don't care. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, and, and well, I guess that is you know, one thing being hardcore idol fans is that you can follow your girl no matter if they're in the run or back. All right, and as first, what are your thoughts? Uh, I don't think it makes a difference. I don't think it's good or bad. It, based on the system that Morning Sumi uses, there's always going to be someone in the center. So if it wasn't, if it isn't Riho, it's just going to be someone else, and that's not going to change. Mata, Mata. Right. I mean, it's not going to change. And if they're, if they're using that system, I'm at least happy. It's like Orobos is saying, it's a pretty girl in the center to represent the group. But All right. Then you guys should quit as friends, fans now. It's going to be Ota in the front. <laughs> if she makes it to the center, then I will quit. All right. Oh, you heard it here first. <laughs> Which is fine. I mean, I going to grad soon anyways. I don't really care. Oh, oh! <laughs> right. But but it also sounds like you you guys are okay with um with Liho Liho being the center and having well at least having a person in the center and pushing everyone else. You guys are somewhat okay with that. It sounds like, uh, or am I reading that wrong? I don't think any of us have a problem with it, but okay. mostly because I think we all like Liho. Liho, Liho, Liho. Yeah, that is very important too. But um, what about you, Samuel? Um, I think I. Oh uh, yeah, I, th- I think it's doing more bad than good. Uh, uh-huh. For the group itself, for the group itself, it's okay. For Liho Liho herself, though, I she is at the age where I so uh, she is at the age where getting so much attention and being so much superior than than her peers. I think that is a bad thing for a girl her age. So for doing good or bad, I think it's doing bad for her. But for the group. For the group. Uh, uh, for the group, uh, I kind of like you guys. I don't really care. Okay. Like, I, I think it's fine the way it is. Fair. Yeah. Um, but so that was the question from Davy. But there was also a PS, the note, uh, and this is why that was a good segue. PS, when will Ouroboros audition for OJS48? So that's OJS48. <laughs> so, I'm not. I'm not go- moving away from HP. Sorry. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Very good answer. Very, very good. good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah, it is not because that he would not get in. He is obviously overqualified, but because it's not our project. He's I'm going to be the new one front. The election every year. Easy. I'm going to be the new front person for Dream Morning Musume. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but also, PPS, um, Davey is kidding. He doesn't want to hurt your feelings. So, no bad feelings, just for the fun of it. Uh, thanks for your email, Davey. Um, for anyone listening to the show, you can always email to sanrio.net and we will address your question one way or the other on right here, Konya Mom TKMR. Thanks again, Davey. Right, so on that note, why don't we throw it to Invis and why don't you wrap up the show for us? Okay. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this episode. 
anything that you liked about the show, go ahead and you can leave us a comment either in the comment for this episode or on our forum, forum.takamario.net. We know this listener question came out pretty fast. We had to kind of shotgun through it. So if you want to give your own opinions, you want to ask us more questions about our personal opinions, go ahead and drop us comments on it. That way we have something to jump off of. Okay. As always, our site, takamaroyo.net. If you guys haven't been there, you guys are watching from iTunes or YouTube. That's our site for a lot of the Hello Project information that you might want for the past week. Uh, this past week, we did have Takamaro Monday, which is our summary from the previous week of events, which include interesting things you might not know, translations for certain things, or what's coming up on sale so that you can go and buy it and support your favorite members. Uh, one of the recent articles that we had that you might not know about is we've done our 10th gen report card. Since they've hit their yeah. year mark, we've decided to yeah. go take a look at how they're doing. Uh, we've rated them on several different things, including their acting, their fashion, their looks, their dancing. You can go check out who we think is the best, who we think could use some improvement, and who was most improved in the past year. Uh, oh, so go oh, ahead and check I would, that out. I want to I I jump in a quick point. That is not a review. Somehow, a lot of people on the internet think that is a review, and that should be very objective. You can't be objective when you're a fan, especially when you know we're asking very detailed opinions on on our our thoughts on the girls. So that's why it is listed under features, not review. Get that right. Thank you. Fair point. Okay, continue. Good, good point. Good point. Okay, so uh, if you do any more opinions about that again you can always leave comments at the bottom of those articles if you give us good words you know we can pick up on that we may be able to take that into further discussion you could even get a little bit of spot here on this show when you know when and if we talk about it uh, as always if you're watching us on YouTube then you also know that we have our other show which comes out every so often talk about a hatana where we talk about the funny things the interesting things the weird quizzical things that you might find on chance you can go ahead and check that out I think users are always welcome to rate us because we have no ratings and we have no idea what you think of us. So so I actually do so rate so us but only rate us five stars <laughs> No, point, I, I don't really care. Just rate us. I want honest opinion. <laughs> yeah, if you guys don't like us, we want to know what we need to fix, you know? So right. please, if you guys have feedback for us, we've got YouTube, we've got iTunes, we've got our forum. Go ahead and visit any of those locations and give us feedback. As always, if you're looking for heads up news or you want to give us quick feedback, you're always welcome to hit us on our Twitter. That's Twitter's username, Konya TKMR which is also so happens to be our YouTube channel name, Konya TKMR, where you can not only find, again, the Hatana, the copies of these shows, but as well as our recent venture into the RPG tabletop realm, where we every once in a while play Legend of the Five Rings, which is just fun, weird action. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested in that kind of stuff. We're always experimenting with interesting things, and if you listen to those those you know RPG things, you might hear some interesting references that you've never thought of before. It's like listening <laughs> four said. hours for one reference. Yeah. Nice. Two references. I thought probably not. I think I heard two last time. But anyway, that's if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go ahead and check that out. You know, we provide content and we want to know who listens to what. So you know, enjoy what you enjoy and like, rate, and subscribe if you want. Okay. Uh, again, hopefully you guys enjoyed today. So that was episode 43. We're on our way to 50. Can you guys believe that? Nope. We are uh, old. <laughs> again, uh. Crazy. The date, if you guys are watching this in out of order sequence, this is October 6th. Wow, I almost forgot the date. Uh, the episode seven. 43. Oh, so. right. That's mine. Right, episode 43, October 6th, yeah. Uh, so far, S. Ferris, Turbos 86, Ouroboros, and Sanrio, this has been Invising. Bye, Bone. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. What? Ding. <laughs> <laughs>